everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Rock 2 Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a video of printing with metallic acrylic paints from Arteza Company, as well as black and white um, acrylic paint and black and white papers. I've got rice paper, I've got black text weight paper, and I have some kind of off-white um, tissue paper. So I have out my 6x6 six six gel plate and my 5x7 gel plate and I'm working with them together. I also have a stack of Stencil Girl stencils. These are mostly the 6x6 six six size. Um, I am doing a 100 day project following along with some other people doing 100 days of Stencil Girl stencils. So um, this is part of the that part of me making stencil designs every day with stencil girl stencils for 100 days and I use this paper for collage and uh, mixed media so it's fun and I just thought I would get out these uh, 36 different colors of metallic paints and play with them in conjunction with black and white and uh, add some drama that way so I'm just getting out different colors I do have a color swatch that I could look at but I'm not really doing that I'm just um sandwiching the stencils in different ways to get different effects and using uh, the black or white paint to add drama to it. So I started out with some uh, pink, yellow, and uh, turquoise color metallic paints on my plates. The first thing I did was to just make a couple prints. You know, sometimes when you um, start gel printing, you just want to get some paint on there. You just want to, um, you're not really like ready to think yet about how you're going to do anything. You just want to get some paint on there. So I started out with just a couple uh, pulls just with plain old paint. And I do end up using those later. Like just now, I used the one um, and put the black design over the top of it with that kind of cracked glass stencil. Yeah, right there. <laughs> so that, that started out with just, just paint and then I put black over the top. With a stencil and then this one um, I started out with with uh, color on the plate and then put black over the top of that through a stencil and I have some really interesting stuff left here and this is what I like this is why I like to start out just making a few prints so that I can get some crusty bits on there because you know I love crusty bits hashtag crusty bits <laughs> so um, I want to pick those up with some paint when you have a little bit of paint that didn't come up, or maybe you've let it dry onto the plate, you can always pick it up with another layer, thin layer of wet paint. So I picked some different colors of the metallic, put them on there, blended them around a little bit, and then I can pick up that interesting pattern. It's not the whole stencil, but it's part of the stencil. And you just get, you know, you get a lot of different things there. Um, some of it's through the stencil, some of it's by picking up stuff left on the stencil. A lot of fun. And so uh, that white is rice paper. That's my new favorite. It's kind of replaced my uh, love of deli paper, although I still use deli paper. I've kind of replaced it with the thin rice calligraphy paper. And I'll make sure to put a link below the video so you can find it on Amazon if you're looking for it. Then the other... Um, paper is text weight like printer weight black paper and it really gives you a lot of drama with especially with the metallics right because the metallics show up so so intensely on the black so then I switched uh, to a couple mask style stencils so these would be a stencil would be something that has holes cut in it a mask is the whole part that got cut out of it right so this one is kind of a swirly thing, and then there's one that's a flower. I love masks. I, th I think they're super cool, especially on the gel plate. So I first um, put the mask down and put some paint over the top in blues and grays, and then I picked that up, and I got kind of a double print, kind of, you can see the stencil and you can see the background. Then I took this, the stencil away, and I'm kind of letting it dry. And on this side, I took my first lift off onto one of those, those pages that I had just put paint on. So it's got metallic paint on top of metallic paint. And these are just things that you experiment with. You get different effects. Sometimes it's grungy. Sometimes it's real clear. 
and you just get different things depending on what layer you sandwich the stencils and the paint. So this time I have stuff again left on the plate and I'm picking it up with uh, white paint. And of course, white on black, really dramatic. Um, picking up onto this off-white paper, not as dramatic, but super cool, right? That's so neat. And then this one didn't actually come out that nicely. I had the leftover uh, paint on there from the st underneath the stencil and I was picking it up. If I had used black as my last paint to pick up, probably would have been a lot more dramatic. But anyway, you know, you get what you get. <laughs> so I'm done with the little spiral stencil mostly. Well, I guess I did use it again a little bit here. Um, I decided to put both stencils on the five by seven mask stencils. And I'll, even just this, um, when you want to just clean up the black paint and leave the black underneath the stencil, you still get something that's very usable, very uh, graphic looking, and you can tear that up and use it in your collages as well. So now black paint is under the masks, right? And now I'm putting colored paint over the top. And this is again the metallic, of course, with some uh, some watermelon color, raspberry color, and I think the other one was mango or melon or something. And then I pulled just a little bit of that off, pulled off the stencils, and then I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit and I'm gonna pick it up again. And it, it's actually one of my favorite prints. And I picked it up on rice paper, so I'll be able to use it um, very easily because rice paper's thin and so it's good for collage, which is what I do a lot of. <laughs> So this time I put metallic paint down, put the stencil over the top, and picked up the paint around it, making sure I really got it pressed down good. And there was a little bit of black acrylic on my brayer, which made some strange color on there, so it was a little bit darker than I expected. And then I left this, the mask stencil on there and took black. And what I expected to happen was to have metallic color under there where the, where the mask had been, but it, it kind of stuck to the mask. You know, I don't, I don't clean my stencils and masks at all. I don't clean them. So sometimes when you want acrylic to stay down on the plate, it instead decides that it's more attractive to the, uh, the paint on the stencil and it lifts up. So in this case, that's what happens if you leave it too long. Or if there's not enough. I mean, there could just be all kinds of factors. So I just put some back on because I'm not going to stress over it. What happened didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted, but I fixed it. So no problem, right? So then that, of course, picks up everything by putting the layer on top. Now this one, I love this one. This one's really cool. And that's got the black underneath the masks and then lift it up with a little bit of metallic and then white over the top. And then this one has the metallic over the top and the black underneath. So they're kind of opposites from each other, but that what a cool stencil that is. I really like that one, that stencil mask. Both of them actually, the spiral too is really super cool. So I was just showing you my cleanup paper. Um, I save that stuff, makes great collage paper, and that's just a piece of deli paper that's had a lot of different paint rolled onto it or scraped onto it. And when it starts to look kind of cool, then I just put it in a basket and then I tear it up later and take the pieces out that I think are super cool. It Not everything on that under paper is going to be perfectly wonderful, but some of it will be. So, And here I'm cleaning out the black in between this stencil that reminds me of blinds. Um, you know, wooden slat blinds that you have over your windows. <laughs> and then the other one's just kind of, it almost reminds me of letters, but it's not letters. It's, uh, I don't know, little shapes. And I think it's cool too. So that one has, um, I think, off-white paint underneath. And then this other one has black paint underneath. So just working two at a time. I don't need big giant pieces of collage paper. I just need a lot of little interesting ones. So I like to work in this way with a smaller plates. Of course, I didn't know that when I first, when I bought my first gel plate, I bought a huge one, you know, well, I bought an eight by 10, I think. And then I, then I got a 12 by 12 and then I started to get smaller ones. And 
you know, I, I didn't realize that what I really prefer is to have a couple small plates to play with. Sometimes I do the 8x10 and a smaller one. And sometimes I do use the 12x12 12 12 because if I want to print whole 8.5 by 11 pages to make into a book, I will gel print on both sides of the paper, fold it over and make it into a book. Then I use the large plate so, um, so that I can get printing all the way to the edge of an 8.5 by 11 piece. So they're all useful. But I do enjoy this, just making uh, collage paper this way. So that one had the black underneath with the metallic over top. And um, I'm not sure what that was, actually. That was a piece of tissue paper, but I can't remember what I did because I was talking. <laughs> All I do is talk, talk, talk. Uh, this one, I wanted to pick up what was left, but I didn't want to use white or black. So I used a light blue, icy color um, to pick it up. And that one turned out really, that's one of my favorites too, this light blue one that's going to come up in a minute. And that just picked up like all the crackled white that was left. See, isn't that cool? It's kind of a light blue with those, those lines on it. And then this one... I decided to just uh, put down that line blinds looking stencil again with some colors and put the black underneath. I mean, over the top, I think. So the five by seven uh, plate doesn't fit the six by sixes and I always have this leftover at the top and bottom, which kind of bugs me. I like the six by six plate for the six by six stencils. That makes sense, right? <laughs> So I'll put uh, links to all the stencils I used today below the video, as well as the paint, the paper, um, the Baron. I know some people ask me about that Baron all the time, and it's a it's a printmaking tool, and it's useful if you have if you have a little bit of uh, strength loss in your hands because of arthritis or whatever. Um, having a baron is a good thing to have when you're gel printing. And I didn't know that at first either. So sometimes I like to make fake washi tape with all these little strips of paper that are left over from when I tear down these prints. I will end up with these strips, right? I have a ton of them. And I just, it's fun to kind of print with them. I think I have a whole video of me printing with uh, these little strips. So um, I decided to do that with that because of those lines, the lines from that blind stencil, I don't know what it's really called, but it looks like blinds to me, um, will make very interesting little strips like washi tape. And I could put those down on a piece of double-sided um, adhesive and then they'll really turn into tape. It's kind of fun. Or I can glue them down or whatever. But see, those are neat, right? Those are neat. And they left a very interesting pattern on the plate, which I then picked up with, uh, looks like probably titanium buff paint. On this other side, I put down some coppers and yellows, then I put the stencil down, and then I put blues and greens over the top of the stencil, and then picked it up with a light color of paint onto these rice paper sheets. And that, that one on the, the left is the prayer flags. I think that's what the stencil's called. Turned out pretty cool. And then you can see those lines that go the opposite direction of the stencil lines because that's where the little pieces of paper left little marks. So that's fun too. That'll be great for collage. Just a tiny bit of pattern on a neutral color is always really useful. So on that side, I just had some paint left on my on my brayer and I just went over a stencil so it's like really scratchy and grungy on the right hand side and then here I'm just picking up the black paint through the stencil to, to uh, pull it out of the stencil because I want the black underneath and the color in the holes. This one is a uh, on the left is one of my new favorites and it, it's from Stencil Club a few months ago I'm not sure what month but I really like that six by six with the little sprigs of different 
plants on it. It's a favorite. So of course it was in the pile when I had them had had a pile of six by sixes out. Now I got to put them away. <laughs> Lots of fun though. This print on the left turned out really good too. It's not done yet. <laughs> and then I got some of that patterning when I cleaned off the stencil. I got some of that patterning on my under paper, which will be great for collage again. So see how that's just kind of grungy. It's just um, it's a neat effect. So there's all the ones with the blinds. <laughs> I need to find out what that's really called. I don't think it's called blinds. Mini blinds. <laughs> so I wanted to want that one on the left to rest a little bit to make sure that it was dry enough for me to pick it up with another layer. And so I started working on the right hand side again with some um, almost Eastery colors, yellow and pink, colors like that. This one I think looks like bamboo. Not sure what it's named either, but I think it looks like bamboo, like a forest of bamboo. So this paint that I'm using on this side to pick up this time is the white metallic paint instead of the, the opaque titanium white paint that I would normally use. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Um, tell me if you've printed with metallic paints before. Uh, a few weeks ago, Peg and I printed with the Color Shift metallic paints, which are a little bit different than these. And so I do have lots of metallic prints that I can use, and I probably will be using some of these to make some sort of a piece, which will the video will probably come out on Saturday. So keep watching for that. So there are the prints that I made. I can't remember. Bamboo. I remember that. This time I put down um, white. And I'm just using my brayer to clean out the holes on that one. Because I knew it was a very thin layer. There wasn't going to be a lot of paint. Oh yeah, that was white to pick up what was left of those those. Uh, kind of gold and pink and yellow colors. So there's the bamboo-y looking stencil, which is probably called something else. <laughs> I didn't look these up beforehand, so I don't know. I have to go look them up now so that I can give you guys links. Anyway, another thing you guys can do if you like exclusive content that only you can get, you can join my channel membership uh, it's $1.99 a month, and something exclusive comes out on the 15th, which is a real-time video with uh, teaching in it. And then I also make a speed video of the same content, if you prefer those. So join up. There's a little join button there next to subscribe. That's if you're on a browser, not an app. If you're on an app on your phone, you won't see it. So you'll have to go to a browser. So that was the last two with the sprigs. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.